professional murder music on the show. I'm a big fan of you guys. I'm really stoked that you guys were able to come on and uh, it just means a lot. So I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join the show. How are things out in Los Angeles? That's where you guys are from, right? LA? Yeah, we're, we live in LA. It's all right. I've been, been um, home a lot, locked in the studio for the last year. Actually getting a lot of projects going through here and we're keeping busy putting out some new yeah. songs. I love that, man. Did you guys find in 2020 and like, I guess most of this year too, taking advantage of the time to kind of write and work on stuff. Cause you guys spend a lot of time on the road, right? Like these days before the whole lockdown thing. No, we haven't been touring for a while, but um, just doing other things just kind of gave us a chance, I guess, to get back into the the mode of writing and working on music like full time, you know? So yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely, man. I first uh, discovered you guys. I'm sure like a lot of people uh, I believe it was like 99, 2000 ish when I bought the end of days soundtrack. And uh, it's interesting to have you guys on the show tonight because I just played this little like uh, tribute thing in Nashville last night down to this venue called the East Room. And it was uh, called 90s Soundtrack Night. And it was just the idea of in the 90s and 2000s, how soundtracks kind of ruled the thing. Like to get a song on a soundtrack was kind of a really big break kind of thing. I can see behind you, you guys have a platinum record from it, I believe. Is that from End of Day soundtrack behind yeah, you? Is, yeah. 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 Hey, what an interesting... People. Go ahead. That's, yeah. that's where most people heard about us first because that, that was a huge soundtrack. It sold a lot of copies. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah you're right. I feel so, like... In fact, back then, it was the soundtracks. It was a lot, lot of big soundtracks, and you'd hear about bands. It was always cool, a cool thing, I thought, you know? Yeah, and it's kind of a bummer to see that it's kind of gone now. I feel like they don't really do soundtracks like they used to. Uh, and back in those days, I mean, yeah, I had a buddy who had a, a song on the Spider-Man soundtrack in like 02 or something. And their song did nothing, but he has like the platinum record in his house right. because of the Chad Kroger tune or whatever. But it was an interesting time. And and last night when I was playing these songs, I kept thinking, I forgot how many good movies had soundtracks that came along with them. So how did that come to be for you guys to get on an Arnold Schwarzenegger soundtrack at that time period? It was actually right when we were signing with Geffen Records. It was one of our first meetings up up in the office with all the, the main guys at um, president of the label, Jimmy Iovine. And they took us in, in, the, in their office and they were like, basically offering us a deal and they go, Hey, would you want to be on the soundtrack? It's Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And they were telling us all the other bands were like, yeah, of course, you know? So, uh, yeah. It's like, what do you think? <laughs> we're like, yeah. has he even toured at that point yet? You know? And they were like, just threw that out. Like, yeah. That's gonna be awesome. So that, that was, that was, that was a huge because that came out, um, a few, we recorded it, it came out a few months later and then uh, quickly got a you know, fan base going. And um, we went out on the road like right out, right as that was coming out and people already knew who we were just from that coming out. So it was pretty awesome. That's amazing. Cause your record wasn't even out yet. Was it? No, our album came out. Was it six months later, a year later? I don't remember. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. I love how that kind of stuff can work. I feel like nowadays nobody tours when, when nothing's out. So to go out before it comes out yeah. yep. is a pretty rad thing, man. I love that. Yeah. And one of the things about the record that came out, which I was a big fan of your self title record. And it's funny because a lot of people, really love the cure cover that you guys did a night like this yeah. and it's funny because at the time i thought that was a smashing pumpkins cover because they oh, covered yeah. it on their uh, box set or whatever so it was like years later i was like oh my god that was a cure song right. but why'd you guys cover that song of all songs i was a big cure fan we didn't want to take one of the more obvious singles you know like that was an older one and uh it was just a cool song and it just kind of worked out we were just we had like a list of songs we were we wanted to put a cover on, on the album. And um, that was just one that we had played a few times and it just kind of worked itself out. Everybody liked it. And we go, yeah, let's go with that one. So it's, yeah. yeah. It is a kind of obscure cure song. It really, I mean, so much so that some of us in the room thought it was a smashing pumpkin song, yeah, exactly. but I love that. You know what else is funny too, about the end of day soundtrack is the fact that that featured guns and roses. Oh my God on there. Yeah. And I feel like when that song came out, it seemed like, Oh man, Chinese democracy is going to be rad. And then it wasn't rad at all. But uh, but I was, I mean, it's funny because that song really kind of set a precedent of like what I thought Guns N' Roses was going to be. And then clearly didn't really pan out the way yeah, I guess I thought yeah, it would. No, it, it was definitely um, a different sound for them. But um, yeah, it, it, they didn't go in that direction with the full album either. So it's yeah. really surprising. I know what you're saying. Absolutely, man. And I, and I still like what they're doing. I'm glad they're back together with, well, I guess, what, three original members, which I guess is, is close enough as we'll probably ever get. I'd love to see Matt Storm up there or Steven Adler, but I, I get why it is the way that it is. But have you guys seen them since they've reunited together? Tom has. He's, I, he's a huge fan. Like three or four yeah. times, yeah. 
Yeah. Isn't it kind of my brother and me went to Chicago, like the first uh, not in this lifetime tour 2016. And we were standing there and we're like, we've got time to get a beer. It's Axl Rose. He's going to be like an hour late. He was 15 minutes early. It was like, whoa, somebody sat that guy down and they explained to him, you could make a lot of money if you just get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, it like they're, they're, they're keeping that all everything on, you know, on the level as far as that, like the old days, none of that craziness anymore, huh? I oh, dude, absolutely. I think, I think he's resolved whatever mental torture he has been going <laughs> I think so, too. So you guys went out in 2001, and you guys toured on the self-titled record. Uh, so you guys were with Interscope, right? Back in those days, was it Interscope you were with? It was Geffen Records under Interscope, yeah. Okay. And so did, how did that go for you guys? I know you're independent now, and that was such a time period whenever you were signed to a label. If the label went away or if you left the label... It's kind of, it was a different time. I feel like nowadays, if you leave your label, you can do, you have your social media, you've got Instagram, all of your followers. How was that whenever you guys parted ways with Interscope? How did it feel after going from what you were doing to then later? It, it was um, it was definitely a weird time because there's, there's a bunch of reasons why it kind of went that direction. It had nothing to do with sales or anything. It was just some conflict of interest with some of the management, the label, this and that. And uh once it started going to where they weren't paying much attention to us, we wanted to leave the label because we'd rather rather leave and do our own thing than just sit there, you know, with no attention being paid to us. So uh, it, it was it was it was a little definitely a transition back into that world. And we put out a, our next album on our own label through a distributor, and we still were able to tour and stuff. But it's definitely a lot ha harder when you don't have the the big bucks from a label paying for everything, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So so yeah. So that 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 was definitely a uh, interesting getting back into that world now now we you know what the way, the way we do it now it's pretty cool because like i used to we you get wrapped up in that whole business world and the whole that whole part of music and you really forget what music's about and why you do it why you love music you know and now i think why i think people are seeming to like our our, um, our new songs a lot is because now i just do music i don't even care about the business i, I mean, yes i take it seriously and i do what i need to do but it's just about making music and whatever happens happens with, 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 with the music as far as the business world. So I'm not overly concerned with all that kind of thing anymore. And it, and it really frees you up, frees your, your mind up and it makes you write better music. Yeah. I, I produce a lot of other bands too. And like, I always try to get them into that mode of like, why do you do music? Don't think about all the, all the, all the crap, you know, like think about, think about why you do music when you're a kid sitting there listening and that that's what it's about and getting into, into the spirit of it again, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I can I can hear that in your guys' new stuff because I remember when I was driving in my car and my Spotify new music, whatever, like popped up and alerted me you guys released a new song. I believe it was All Comes Down, the one you put out before Ever Ending. And uh, you guys just have a sound like it just sounds like you guys, but it just sounds like you just really do whatever you want to do. And I think that's so cool because a lot of bands, and they've been at it for a while, I'm sure, as you know. They get caught up in that way of a formula and it also almost like comes off as force, but you guys come off as fresh as the first time I ever heard you, oh, nice. which I think is amazing. No, of course, man. Yeah. That's uh, we actually have a, a, a brand new song. Cause some of those songs were kind of parts of them were done over many years. And, but we have a, 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 a brand new one that we, we just finished writing and we just tracked and it's um, we, I'm mixing it right now. Oh, and, nice. Uh, all the stuff we're releasing on um, it's, it's a friend of mine's label. It's Octa heart records. And, um, uh, actually, we're putting this next one out probably in about a month from now. And uh, oh, nice! And and people have heard it. Actually, say it, 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 a few couple of people told me it's their favorite song from us ever. Like even including all our old stuff. So oh, dude! Yeah, I never know what to yeah. expect. I, I just write. I hear the stuff so often, and, <laughs> and you hear that. You know, what I mean, so I'm like, uh, I like it, but I'm not going to sure how people are going to take it. And it's a little different, but it still has our has our sound, but it definitely has a, some more modern production techniques at the same time. Yeah, I love it, man. And I have to ask, I know this is probably the cheesiest question. You've probably been asked it a thousand times, but how did you guys come up with the coolest rock and roll band name of all time? Because it really is, when you say professional murder music, that's just a cool band name. Yeah, it was actually my uh, bass player who's not playing with us right now. He, uh, he, um, he, back when we were forming the band, him and I, we, um, we, uh, it's just a name he had. And I was, I saw it written down. I'm like, Dad, we got to use that as a band name. And, and so he's like, yeah, let's do it. I think it has I love that slogan for his, his other band yeah it was like a slogan for his other band but it just look i saw it written down professional murder music well, that's that sounds like a band name let's go with that so it yeah doesn't really mean anything it's just it's just a cool sounding thing but everybody does ask everybody expects it to be some <laughs> thing behind it which is not necessarily yeah we yeah we kill people right yeah, that's not what yeah, it's yeah. it's just a some cool huge dark name, story you know? but that's, <laughs> 
<laughs> some huge dark story behind yeah, the name. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so rad, man. And you guys are one of those bands. I feel like whenever you meet another fan of you guys, like for instance, uh, there was a guy that worked up here for a while. And one day we were just talking about bands and somehow you guys came up and me and him both were just like, dude. So it feels like you guys have like fans that are so die hard. Do you find that still like when you guys play shows, do you find it's a lot of people who want to hear slow and they want to talk about end of days or do they want to hear the newer stuff? And you have these, like, it seems like your fans are pretty, pretty intent on being diehard fans. Yeah. Yeah. The, the one people that like us really, um, really get into it. I, you know, both. I, I definitely, everybody wants to hear slow. That's, that's the song that most people because of the, the, the soundtrack, like we spoke about it, that gets a lot of people, got a lot of people into the band. So they do want to hear that one, but, uh, most of our fans seem to be very open for the new stuff. So that, that's been great. You know? Yeah. Are you guys planning on touring in 2022 at all? Maybe doing some shows? We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll take it as it comes. I haven't really, we haven't planned it yet, but um, if stuff's going well and um, we can, we certainly will. Yeah, I love that. Have you guys ever played Nashville before? I'm sure you've probably come through at some point, maybe a while back. It's, it's definitely guys, changed a lot. I'm not sure if we ever played there. I know I've been there. Yeah, I've been I there. Know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I actually, I don't think I've actually ever played there. No, I don't think so. Well, right on. Yeah. yeah, you guys definitely got to come here and do a buzz show. That'd be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, boys, one thing I do with bands when they call into the show is I do a five random question game. But I always ask because one time a band did not want to play because I guess the guy had lied to his wife about being on the show or some crazy dramatic thing. So uh, would you guys like to play the game? Sure. sure. <laughs> Nothing too incriminating, oh, yeah. I promise. Not, yeah, both, I don't know what I'm getting into, but go, go ahead. You both look nervous. I love it. I promise nothing's going to get you canceled. Okay. Question number one, professional murder music on the local buzz. So your Christmas tree is already up, or that's insane? It's November. There's no Christmas tree. Yeah, I don't, I've never put my own Christmas tree out. So there you go. <laughs> Same. Same. I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have kids. I don't. I don't. I don't. You know. So uh, I, I don't. Yeah. My wife. I'm not me. against it. I'm she just... won't let me decorate. I, I, I would if she if she was into it, but she. It just seems like a lot of work. I totally feel. I got a yeah. buddy who has like a small one that's always prepared. So he just pulls it up, dusts it off, and plugs it in. I have the uh, the Snoopy one. Like, oh yeah, yeah. With the little ornament, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I go to my family's house, whatever. And they, you know, I can celebrate Christmas there. I get into the spirit when I'm with them. But there you go. I love that. Right on. Question number two: Professional murder music on the local buzz. The Foo Fighters got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, which had a lot of like people torn. I saw some people were mad about it, saying that it's too soon. I think it's because it makes people feel old, probably. But I wanted to ask you: What's one band that is not in the Hall of Fame and probably won't be, but you'd love to see them get in there? I don't even know who's in the Hall of Fame. I don't yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I've been to the Hall of Fame, but I don't really follow <laughs> that that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't even know who's like in, not in in that. In, in, I'm mostly, sure, it's mostly pretty big bands. I yeah, think, right? I, I mean, I'm sure there's been some pretty big so-called snubs or whatever. Like, oh yeah. Iron Maiden's probably not in it, I think, right? Something like yeah. That. yeah, they probably Here's probably not, Here's probably not in it. They, yeah. they should, like, we're talking about their cover. Maybe there you go. There's one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of bands you'd think are in there are not in there. It always yeah. seems like. Like, I'll hear, oh, that guy's not in the Hall of Fame. That's crazy. Yeah. Question yeah. number three with professional murder music on the local buzz. What is your favorite Thanksgiving movie? I'll give you an example for me. Mine is Son-in-Law with Pauly Shore. People don't realize that is totally a Thanksgiving movie. What's your favorite Thanksgiving movie? Oh, man. Thanksgiving movie. You gotta answer this one. I don't even know, man. I don't know. It's been a while what, since. What? What even? I stumped him. I stumped him. I knew I could do it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Um. I don't even Great know. Pumpkin Charlie Brown. <laughs> you watch. Yeah, it's still pumpkin patch. Kind of fits. I like that. <laughs> Question number four: Professional murder music on the local buzz. What is one trend you'd like to see less of in 2022? Less trend. Oh, um, one a trend to see less of. I guess um, everybody on their on their freaking phones and Facebook, Facebook all that, all that algorithms. crap, is all day long with this and in their face looking at that crap. I I I, I, yeah. I, I, I like that stuff to an extent, but it, it gets it's too extreme and it's it's ruining people's. Um, yeah, it really is. It's it's, ru it's, ru it's ruining their intelligence and what they think is real in this world. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, you know what's wild to me when when like cell phones and things like that something that's crazy for like i guess our generation to see is this upcoming generation the shamelessness of the selfie thing you'll be sitting next to some young person in like a restaurant and they're just like smiling and posing yeah and like i feel like if i have to do that yeah, i'm like ashamed. That's, that's i know i think i've taken maybe 
free selfies because I was checking my hair or something. <laughs> I never, I never, I never do that. Yeah. You know, I always do it in private. I mean, the blinds yeah. are closed. Nobody knows. No one knows. Never do it in public. Yeah. Question number five with professional murder music on the 1029 The Buzz. The last question. So you guys have been here. Are you familiar with like the Broadway area, like the pedal tavern things that people have down here? Not really. Yeah. Like a pedal tavern. Yeah. Have you seen yeah, where like basically someone drives a tavern and has all these like tourists or they sit around it and they drink and they cheer. It's pretty obnoxious. But I was gonna ask you guys, you guys can have your dream tour. We're talking 75 dates, direct support, any band alive or dead. But in order to get the tour, you have to move to Nashville and for an entire summer drive a pedal tavern for a living. Do you take the tour? A pedal tavern for a living. Drive you have to drive it, not yeah, you have to drive it. Wait, so the whole summer it? tour. It's they they you just drive a bunch of people around. I see what you're saying. Oh, for for I don't think I can handle that. It's like, <laughs> it's, like the worst, it's like the worst Uber job of all. Yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're well, good. That's yeah. That's, you guys are the first band to ever say no to that. So I'm glad that you guys stand by your principles because I wouldn't I, do it either. No, I, yeah, no, I do. Like I said, especially again with this with this thing now, I just I do it because I like making music and all the I put all that other business side as secondary, really. And it, I think I think things will work itself out because of that, you know, in a good way. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I love that. I think that should be. Well, boys, before one last question before you guys go, I really appreciate you joining the show. It's an honor to have you on here. You got to tell me about Ever Ending because I love that song. You don't have to give too much away, but what is that song about? Because I really dig that tune, man. Well, for one thing, that's actually the, the very first thing that him and I wrote together. Like the, yeah, Many years ago. The, the music of it, yeah, but the, but the lyrics, it was the lyrics. To me, it, it's not so... I Tom helped me write those, and actually, um, the girl who sings on it, Charlie, from the again. Uh, from the band Forget Your Friends, uh, she sings on it as well and helped us write a little of the lyrics. So it's a little less personal compared to some of my other lyrics. But to me, when I when I sing it and and um, and uh, hear it, it's just about people and and you know relationships and and people that come in through your life and the importance of that. You know, I'd say a lot of it too is is even relationships that maybe go go south and you're not in it anymore, they still have an importance in your life. And if you're in a relationship now that that that's that's that you don't think you'd want to, you know, take the heart for many years down the road, you shouldn't even be in it. So that's the way I way I, I kind of look at it, you know. So it's just yeah just talk at all like the good things, whether I have them or not any longer, looking back at those those times of my life, you know. I love that man. Well not it's so a great thing. Not so specific if you read them, but that's what I feel from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it, man. I mean, honestly, when I when it, I, I loved All Comes Down, but then on Halloween, whenever you guys released that, I was like, dude, this is amazing stuff. Also, I love the Halloween release date. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I, I like when bands yeah, release yeah. on things like that. Yeah, we got a band professional Mary music. It fits, right? <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Well, boys, it was an honor to have you on the show. Best of luck in 2022. When that new single drops, please send it my way. I'd love to add it, man. I love spinning y'all stuff. Absolutely. Right Absolutely. on, boys. Oh, Thank you.